Hello and welcome to my YouTube video. My name is Suzanne Bryan and in this video I'm going to demonstrate how to recognize the row where the cable crosses. When you're working ropes or cables you cross them at designated intervals and in order to know where to do the next interval or crossing you need to be able to count from one to the next. So you need to be able to identify where the actual cable crossing is. So this tube comes up like this and goes under here, reemerges here, goes up, etc. This one comes up here, crosses here, reemerges here. So where is the actual crossing? Let's take a look at this. It looks like these stitches are crossing over these stitches at this point or it could be down here. It's really hard to say. So one of the things that you can do to identify is use a different color of yarn to work the crossing row and that's what I'm going to do in this video. So here I am ready to work the next cable crossing row. I'm going to use a different color. I'm going to pull in some green here and work the cable crossing so that we can identify it and see what it actually looks like. Let's make this a little bit smaller. Okay. So we've got our edge stitches here. We're going to work those. And I'm doing this continental, of course, because I'm a continental knitter, but it doesn't really matter whether you throw or you're continental. The results are the same. So I'm doing a 2 over 2 right cross cable. That means that these two stitches, this one and this one, are going to come forward in front of these two and over here to this position on the needle. You can either do that with a cable needle or I just cross them without a cable needle. This is a good skill to learn how to do. Once you have, are able to cross cables without a cable needle, you'll never look back, believe me. So now they're crossed. Now we're just going to work them. This is the cable crossing row. This is the row on the chart or the directions where you're crossing the stitches. And we want to be able to identify this row because we need to be able to count. When you're working flat, as in this swatch, back and forth, you can only work the cable crossings on the right side rows, so you have choices. But if you're working in the round, Sometimes it's hard to tell whether you're on the third row, the fourth row, the fifth row. This is where this method really helps. So I've worked the green across the cable crossing row. You witnessed me doing that. I'm going to cut the video right here, work a few more rows, then we'll come back and look at this. Okay, here we are. I worked the green row across. I worked three more rows, so I, technically at this point I would be ready to do another cable crossing, and let's take a look at this. We can see that these stitches are consecutive. One, two, three, four. Whereas the row below, one, two, we can't see three, and four is half obliterated. So this is not the cable crossing row, but oftentimes that's what people look at because they look, where does the cable cross? The cable actually crosses at almost two rows below where we did the cable crossing row, the actual crossing of the fabric where two rows, two columns slip over the top of the other two columns is way down here compared to the row that we worked on the chart. This is important to know because when you're planning a cable in a garment you want to know where is the cable crossing going to be on the fabric, not in the chart. For example, I like to start and stop my cable columns where the stitches cross. It looks tidy that way. So I might even cross them and bind off right here instead of working that row. Conversely, when I cast on, I might cast on as a wrong side row and the very first row be a right side row so it would cross right at the beginning of the cast on. Now why would you want to know which row crosses? Because sometimes it gets confusing. For example down here, let's shrink this down a little bit so you can see the whole swatch. 
I'm working a two over two cable crossing every four rows. Here, I miscounted and this got worked at six rows. So you can see it's out of sync. And you've probably seen this in your work before or other people's work. Now you can do this on purpose. You could have a, sh a short cr uh, space between the crossings, then a long space and a short space and make this be symmetrical. But in this case, this was a mistake. So now let's turn this over and look at the other side and see another way that we can count between the cable rows, the cable crossings. Let's enlarge this again. If you look at the back of the work, this is where the cables became crossed right here. And this was our cable crossing row. This is where we worked the crossing. This is the pearl bump on the other side resulting from the cable crossing. This is the next pearl bump, next pearl bump, next pearl bump. So we worked the cable crossing, then we've worked one, two, three rows, we're ready for another cable crossing. You can see below this pearl bump that there are, there's nothing there. It's a space, it's a gap. This is where physically they crossed. You can see these are coming this way and these are going underneath. This is the physical crossing, but as far as the charted crossing and the actual working, this is the row where the green went across. So you can look down here. You can see on the one where there's a long space. Okay, here's the first pearl bump right here. One, two, three, four, five, six, and I worked the cable crossing. Then one, two, three, four, cable crossing. Can you see that? One, two, three, four, cable crossing. One, two, three, four, cable crossing. I hope this helps you with your cables. Cables can be, uh, cables are absolutely beautiful. I love to add them to my work. And I hope this helps you in figuring out how to count the rows between cables and to be able to identify the cable crossing itself. If you enjoy my videos, be sure to subscribe, give me a thumbs up. Down in the description, down below the video, I'll have uh, links to other videos about cables and my contact information if you'd like to get in touch with me. I have a group on Facebook called Knitting with Suzanne Bryan. I have another group on Ravelry called Knitting with Suzanne Bryan where we talk about technical things about knitting and you feel free to join me in either one of those groups. I hope you have a, hope you have a great day and happy knitting!